something that needs a little fixing on Far Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Restorations and Repairs on a very cold North Carolina morning. I've got the garage all warmed up, got the wood burning stove going. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to try to figure out what exactly is wrong with the engine on the 74 Super Beetle. So if you followed the last video, we got it running. We got it running. I cleaned out the gas tank, put new fuel lines in, and we got it running. But, and this is a big but, when I was cranking it over, you could hear an uneven, hear that not all the cylinders have the same amount of compression. And so what we're going to do is diagnose that today. We're going to figure out what exactly is going on. And to do that, and you can do this on any car, not just an old car, but a brand new one operates on the exact same principles, you're going to need this. This is called a compression tester. Here's the hose that goes with it. We're going to take out our spark plugs. We're going to put this into the spark plug hole. We're going to hook this to it, and we're going to crank over the engine uh, a bunch of times. We're looking for, first off, we're looking for even compression across all the cylinders. So if you have a V8, all of them have no more of a deviation than, say, 15 to 20 percent. In this little four banger, same rules apply, right? I want 15 to 20 percent is the max. So if one cylinder is reading 150 and one's reading like 80, we know we have a problem with that cylinder. In the case of this Beetle, I suspect one cylinder out of the four has something going on, but it may be that it's just been sitting and the rings are clogged. This is a way to find out. And as I'm taking the spark plugs out of the Beetle and going through and doing the compression test, I will give you some guides, some tips and tricks on how to determine if we have a mechanical problem, what that problem is, because we can do something like add oil to a cylinder, and if the compression ratio suddenly jumps up, well then we know we have a problem with a piston ring instead of a valve. But let's go ahead, we're gonna pull the plugs out of this thing and we will see what's going on. All right, the first step when we're gonna do a compression test is to remove all the spark plugs in the engine. The reason you can't just go to the suspect cylinder and crank it over is you're gonna get a weird imbalance here if I leave all the other plugs in. So it really makes for a more accurate reading if I can create equal compression, that is no compression, along all four cylinders and only pressurize the cylinder that I'm trying to test. It sounds a little complex, but it really isn't. But the first step here, I wanna make sure that I don't accidentally, I wanna make sure that I don't accidentally start the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo the coil wire here. And we are going to, uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull out the plug wires. And I'll just set those off to the side. Do the same on this side. Something for you to notice right off the bat, when I start taking my spark plugs out, I'm gonna inspect the plug ends. And the spark plugs themselves, if they've been in there long enough, can tell us a lot about the overall running condition of an engine. If they all look the same, and they all look like a lightish brown, then we're in good shape. That means that the engine is combusting properly. We have a good air-fuel mixture and everything is operating as it should. If they're all really black and sooty or oily, well, that means that the car is either running rich or we have oil getting into the system. If they are a whitish color, that means the engine is running hot, probably running lean. In a case like this where we're looking for a specific problem with one cylinder, taking out all four spark plugs and checking them as we go, we might notice that one plug is totally different than the rest. And that is the first sign that we have a problem with that cylinder. Let's take a look. All right, it might be hard for you to see. I don't know if I can put that up close there and maybe it'll focus. Maybe, maybe not. It's kind of tough there. But what we have here, that one's, that one's a little sooty. That would indicate that this uh, cylinder here is running a little rich. Let's take a look and see if the rest kind of line up with that. That one's about the same. It's um, running a little rich, not terrible. We're at a higher elevation and this hasn't been tuned for this elevation, so. What we might be seeing there is just, uh, just, just the air fuel mixer being a little leaner up here in the sky. Right, let's get the back ones out now. So we've got all of the spark plugs out and nothing really to report. There's one that's slightly dirtier than the rest. That was that one right there. That was actually that cylinder right there. So I think that's one. One, three, four, two, I think is how this goes on these engines. It's been a while since I actually paid attention, but there you go. So nothing definitive. The plugs are worn, not worn out, dirty. Look at that. 
electrodes. When I first pulled it out, I thought, oh boy, these have been in here forever. Yeah, no, they haven't. It's just the engine is leaky on this, so they've just kind of collected some soot. All right, so now that that's out of the way, we're going to go ahead and hook up this hose right here, and we're going to start with cylinder number one. Let's see if I can get this in here. Okay, once it's tight, hook up our compression gauge, which is that part right there. See, it's got a little valve right here. That's to let the air off when you take this thing apart. Now this gauge is worn. 120 is the new 150, because on this thing right here, it just doesn't go up to what it actually is. But I compared it with a friend's when it first started acting up to see if it was going to read the right. And, uh, and, and we figured out that it was just about 30 pounds low. So let's get this closer in. Yeah, all right. So what I'm gonna do, you can see it's on zero. I'm gonna go ahead and crank over the engine and we'll check to see what it is. The engine should spin over very freely. Eight or nine spins usually does the trick, and oh boy, 30 PSI, that is, uh, that's not good. And that's where the bad plug, the more fouled plug was. So that is really not good. I'll go ahead and we'll run through the rest of them, but we seem to have found our problem already. It looks like number one spark plug is just not, or number one cylinder, I should say, is just not a happy cylinder. But let's go ahead, since we have it apart, We'll check the rest and we'll see if this engine is salvageable as it is in the car. Now I'm going to be pulling this engine out for other reasons. I'm going to do a dress up kit on it. Um, but uh, well, we want to see if it's something where if we have a bad ring or bad valves. And so I'll show you that here after we're done with the initial compression test. All right, here's number two. I usually do eight or nine puffs per cylinder. That usually gets it fired up enough. Okay, so there we are with a normal cylinder. So that's 120, right? 120, like I said, a 120 is about 150 on this, so we're good there. And we'll go ahead and move on to the other side. I won't film the whole thing, but we'll compare notes here in a second. Well, we got our compression test done, and what we ended up with was 30 PSI, 120, 125 and 115. The three cylinders that are all within that 15 or 10 PSI, not a worry, no problems there at all. The one here that was 30 PSI, that is definitely our weak cylinder. In fact, I went back and ran it again and there was no change. So the next thing to do to figure out whether we're looking at a ring or cylinder problem or a problem with valves is to insert oil into the cylinder. On a conventional upright engine, this would be a little easier to do, but what I'm going to do is take this hose, stick it down through the spark plug hole, and then on the other end, I have an old-fashioned oil can squirter, and I'm just going to put a little bit of oil. I don't want to go crazy, but I'm going to fill it up with oil. What that's going to show us when I do this compression test after pumping a little bit of oil in there is that if our compression goes up significantly, you know, 15, 20 PSI, we are looking at a ring problem because the oil is acting as a temporary assist to help seal the cylinder. If I get no change at all, then we might be looking at a burned, cracked, or cracked valve, or we might just be looking at, because these are manually adjusted valves, that the valve is adjusted way too tight, and that's not allowing it to close all the way on the compression stroke. I've got my fingers crossed that that's the case, because this engine, although a bit leaky, um, isn't all, really didn't seem to be in that bad of a shape when I checked it over. There's not a lot of end play here, which is a big issue with these things as they wear. So um, I almost feel like it's been apart not that long ago. That doesn't necessarily mean that it was done right, but let me go ahead. I'm gonna snake this in here. It's impossible to see this stuff, uh, but this is the same. So if it was on a, a regular inline four or V6 or V8, the same, the rules apply. You're gonna drop a little oil down into a cylinder hole and you're gonna run the test again. Let's do that. Right. 
and we got some good news. There was no change in the compression for number one, which means that our problem is in the valves and not in the cylinders. That is good news. That is good news. So next step will be to raise the car up and adjust the valves on this side. Not something I'm going to do here on video for y'all, but that's it. That is how you determine mechanical issues inside of an engine without tearing it down. You go in there, you do your compression test, you take your readings, you look for a weak cylinder, and you go from there. That'll do it for today, my friends. I'm Eric, the owner of Farpoint Restorations. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it a little educational. <laughs> and if you did, perhaps you'll think about liking and subscribing. And I'll see you next time. Take care.